Classic Service Models here, back at you with another video. In today's episode, I'm going to be doing an Exocar update. Um, I've had several people on Instagram uh, direct message me and ask me to do uh, just some little updates on the car and keep everyone posted as to where we're at with it. And uh, I've decided that from here on out, I'm going to start doing like little build series, and update videos, and and stuff of that nature. As you can tell, the car's in pieces off the desk behind me right now. I haven't had the chance to uh, to get started painting. Um, hopefully I'll get to do that today. And maybe, just maybe, this thing will be done before next weekend's Atlanticon show in Marietta, Georgia. So, anyways guys, without further ado, I'm gonna quit rambling on. We're gonna get right on into the video. Enjoy. Alright guys, so here we are. This is our Exocar update uh, as requested by a bunch of people. Um, this is the first update video I've ever done on the channel, so bear with me if I sound a little awkward. <laughs> I'm still kind of trying to get into, you know, doing YouTube videos um, and sounding like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but anyways guys, here's our uh, our finished up chassis. This is a 100% scratch built chassis out of a 0 0.80 styrene rod. I think that's the size. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's that's the the size. The front suspension is a leftover suspension from a Tamiya F1 car, and uh, as you can see, I've went in and added all of the you know little photo etch joints and stuff, and then I've capped them all off with some really nice Ming. Uh, bolts. They send you a sheet of these little bolt heads and and nuts and stuff and you just cut them off and glue them on. Yeah. So there's the, the side the rear of the chassis. So the rear end is actually uh, an independent rear suspension out of a 99 Revell uh, SVT Cobra. Um, when I got the kit, it was just a parts kit. didn't have a body, hood, windows, nothing like that, but it had everything else. So it was a perfect opportunity to rob a nice independent rear end out of. And there's a top view with our little photo etch roof tabs. Uh, these are just there for looks. You know, I, I thought that it would be, you know, a little bit more detail to add them so that when the roof panel is not on the car, you get the idea that you could bolt the roof down. And then this little gap back here, I made this gap in here so that the fuel cell slides in and the sending line on the bottom of the fuel cell actually plugs into the back of the fuel pump. And then there's another line that comes out of the front of the fuel pumps, turns down, runs up the bottom corner of the floor pan and up the firewall into a little block that then will pass through the firewall and into these two lines and then from there into the fuel rails on on our engine which we'll get to in just a in just a minute um so yeah that's that's pretty much gonna do it for the chassis i like said it's all scratch built i've got to go in uh before i start painting today and get in and, and do some sanding along these joints and stuff just to try to just try to flatten everything out and get it to look uh, uniform. And we're only going to do it on the outside. We won't do it on the inside because, well, I mean, for one, I can't get down in there really. But yeah, that's going to do it for the for the chassis. Here are the wheels that I'm using. These were robbed out of an Aoshima 124th scale Nissan GTR. And uh, I went through several wheels <laughs> trying to figure out which ones I wanted to use for this particular build. And uh, I eventually ended up landing on these uh, last weekend. Um, and the reason being, uh, the reason I didn't use the first two sets, um, we'll start off with the original set of wheels that I was going to use. These are a nice two-piece 3D printed wheel from JPS and these are awesome. 
you know, just some really beautiful barrel work, nice rubber tires. Um, you know, the, the center hub is, is really nice. It's, you know, just great detail. He leaves the back of them blank so that you can make your own posts. And that slides down in there just like this. I started out with these wheels. But after the, the, the car started to take shape, I just thought that these looked a little too show car-ish for me. And, um, you know, I knew right then that I didn't think that these were the move. I thought these would look better on a, on a classic or something, you know, like a resto mod or something of that sort. So we, we set those off to the side. Actually, there's the front wheel. I didn't show you guys. <laughs> The same thing, just a little bit narrower. But anyways, I moved on to these wheels, which are some of my favorite wheels that I have in my stash. And these are from Miguel over at Devil Dog Dot Games, and um, they're an awesome one. You know, just a one piece wheel entire combo. I was going to use these. I had planned to use these for the longest time after I ditched the last set of wheels. But the issue that I had is, and it's not really an issue, it's just I want to paint the wheels on this car red. Uh, I didn't want to go black. And because these are a one-piece wheel and tire, there's not a, a huge demarcation line around the bead of the wheel. And I didn't want to scribe these out and run the risk of scoring the sidewall of the tire and then having to fill it and sand it only to go back and try to scribe again and then possibly make another mistake. So I figured out, you know, why not keep these and use them on a pickup or something like a, a hypo pickup or something where I can paint them black and, uh, you know, maybe detail the spokes out a little bit. I, you know, I think that would look great. So, you know, and it keeps me from damaging them. And besides, you know, the GTR wheels are really close. You know, they, they, they look great. They look about the same so I figured you know we'll just swap over to the GTR wheels so here are here are our GTR wheels that we're going to be using these will be painted in Tamiya X7 red when the car is finished and the, the the paint on the wheels will match all of the side plate detail on the arrow such as these little side plates through here Yeah, you can see that. These will be painted red, while the bottom of the splitter will be painted in black. And there's the bottom. These are all scratch built. Um, the splitter is six independent pieces. You got an inner side plate and an outer side plate, an upper uh, splitter, and then the lower splitter. The upper is grooved so that the chassis actually just slides right in and that ensures that when I go to get ready to put this car together that everything goes together straight and that it looks right. Now we're on to the wing. Again, scratch built out of a styrene strip and some plastic card. Again, the side plates will be finished in red while the, the central parts of the wing will be finished all your uh, all your contact surfaces will be finished in black. And then here's our scratch built roof panel. It's just two little pieces that'll sit on top of the car when I'm when it's on display and you know I want to display it with the roof. And then we have our four piece side skirts. Um, has a single front plate and a dual rear plate. And these as you can see, there's a styrene strip on the bottom of the chassis. And what that's there for, again, is to ensure that when these go on, they go on and they sit straight. It's just another tactic that I've picked up scratch building. And those will sit on there just like so. Again, following suit with the black and red paint scheme for all of the, uh, all of the aero surfaces. Moving on. As you can see, we've got some of our uh, wiring harnesses. This is the main computer that's going to be on the firewall. It's got the wires for the battery, 
The, this longer wire will plug into the top of the fuel cell. I don't want to spare too much detail to you guys just yet. I want to wait and, and save that for the reveal video, which will probably be a couple of weeks from now. I've got the, you know, I've got the show in Marietta coming up next weekend, and uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to spare too much detail. So the engine is an Iceman Collections, uh, 5.2 liter Voodoo. And uh, these engines you'll find in the uh, GT350 and GT350R Mustangs. These make 526 horsepower in the real car. And uh, on, on, on the model, I ended up having to add these plates right here. And what these plates are there for, put our 3D printed headers on. Those plates were designed to kick the header out because without them the header was actually nearly hitting the side of the uh, bell housing on the transmission back here and uh, I needed them I needed them pushed out and I didn't feel like trying to take a lighter or some heat to these to get them to bend you can actually bend this stuff the the plastic from Shapeways is susceptible to heat but I didn't want to run the risk of uh, of damaging these so as you can see the plates push the headers out and uh, they're all pinned I, I tend to pin a lot of my uh, a lot of my stuff so that I know that you know I can mock it up uh, mostly assembled and at least get everything clearanced how it should be without having to you know tack stuff in with glue or tape it in or anything like that so we'll sit that back on there like this We'll sit it off this. Actually, we'll go ahead and show you guys what it looks like with uh, with both of them on. So that's our engine. Um, as you can see, there's wire still in there from the uh, the starter that runs up to uh, like a little coil block that I made. And this is a nice Whipple supercharger that I had 3D printed from Miguel over at DevilDog.Games. Um, amazing work, as always, by Miguel. Brother, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, really making this build unique and uh, different than anything else out there. Um, as far as I'm concerned, this is the very first 3D printed Whipple supercharger, or at least that I've ever seen. And uh, the guy is just amazing in Blender because these are two totally different companies, Hobby Works and Iceman Collections. And this thing just sits on there perfect. I mean, it just, it's, it's perfect. It's nice low deck height. Ensures that, you know, it'll be a direct replacement for uh, the factory intake. And that thing just looks killer on there. It looks great. Golly. Good job, Miguel. I've went in and scratch built some fuel rails out of styrene rod and uh you know inserted some uh nice wire to, to mimic the fuel rails and stuff like that. So or excuse me, fuel lines. These the plastic is a fuel rail, Josh. <laughs> but that's uh that's our engine. As far as pulleys go, I don't like using the resin pulleys on these engines very often. So what I, I tend to do is go through off the sprue and I always get these really nice uh, aluminum pulleys. They look great. They're easy to, to work with. They got a really nice uh, post on the back so that you can drill your engines out and install them. So for paint on the car, um, I'm going to be using for the main chassis just the chassis will be finished in AK Extreme or AK Interactive Extreme Metal AK669 Titanium. What originally got me using AK Interactive products, uh, who originally got me using these, is Sean King over at Prime Model Works, who is what I believe. Now, this is just a preference, you know, it's just my opinion, and you know what they say about opinions. He is, in my mind, the best aircraft modeler on YouTube. The guy's amazing. Does insane work. And he uses a lot of this. Uh, 
a lot of these products from AK Interactive. And they're not cheap. <laughs> it's just, you know, one of the, the byproducts of being a modeler, I guess, is this stuff is extremely expensive uh, per bottle. And uh, make sure, if you guys have this, please make sure that you're wearing a, a face mask because this stuff is really, really stout and it will choke you to death if you're not wearing uh, proper protection. So, nice plug. Anyways, so, like I said, the main chassis is going to be finished in, in titanium. The engine, fuel cell, radiator, drive shaft, and brakes will all be finished in extreme metal polished aluminum. Uh, just, you know, primarily because the engine is an aluminum block engine in real life. Figured what the heck, it looked really nice. And then for the headers, we're going with AK670 stainless steel. And to get the heat in the in the exhaust like you would see in real life i'm going to use tamiya's line of clear acrylics to go in and do the uh the dyeing process um like i said before all of the arrow uh your main contact surfaces will be finished in mr surfacer 1500 black I would show you guys that, but I don't have any here, uh, which is putting a, a huge strain on my, my paint process. I've got to get started painting this painting this thing today. The, uh, the black won't be here until, I think, Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday, which means I'm going to be painting this thing the week of the show. Next weekend is our show, so it's be kind of last minute. Hopefully the paint shows up and I can get this thing done. Like I said, all of the, the main surfaces of the arrow will be finished in black. And then all of these side plates on the spoiler, front splitter, uh, roof panel, you know, side skirts, all that stuff, the wheels will be finished in Tamiya X7 red. And then, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty much going to top off the exterior paint. As far as the seats go, um, I've kind of went back and forth as to whether or not I want to do them just solid black or if I want to throw in some some detail on the inside through here with maybe some red accents to match the uh to match the arrow so and these things are getting black seat belts and I kind of don't want the 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 harnesses it's actually photo etch harnesses I don't want the harnesses to kind of disappear in the seat so you guys let me know if you think that we ought to do a two-tone red and black on these seats I think it would look awesome so same with the dash. The dash will be finished in black. A um, little neat thing that I've done with this dash. As you can tell, the dash pad is out of a Mustang kit. And then there's a nice piece of uh, L-shaped styrene glued to the bottom of it. And that served as the dash face. And I took an old license plate... <laughs> out of another kit and repurposed it as a screen and added these uh, styrene strips around the edges of it to kind of, you know, make it look like it's bezeled. So that's pretty much it for the for the interior. Anyways, guys, I, I think that's pretty much going to about wrap it up for the little update video. Um, we're going to get started painting here. I'm hoping to have the chassis, um, the wheels, let's see maybe the engine fuel cell radiator all that other stuff should possibly be done by tomorrow but these uh these aero surfaces waiting on mr surfacer 1500 is uh is gonna be down to the wire so hopefully that paint shows up and we can get this thing done but anyways guys that's gonna do it uh if you like the content please subscribe to the channel uh hit the little bell turn on notifications so that you guys stay up to date of when i upload a new video please like comment and share and uh i look forward to seeing you guys in the next video Take care.